Hmm? Good summer, man. Good summer. Oh, really all the guys, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, it's so many DBs uh, that I have available right now to, uh, man, it's like uh, almost not such thing as a one group because there's so much talent in all the groups. So there's a lot of guys that's impressing me uh, every day. I mean, all the guys are available right now, so everybody's practicing, doing a great job, uh, flying around. Uh, the energy level was up high. Um, enthusiastic, very enthusiastic, uh, you know, as a unit. Um, loving to compete, um, taking coaching. So. Andrew was just saying that if you had to sit down today and do four or five guys, it would be tough because of just how much depth you have right now. Yeah. What is the positive and also the challenges of working through that, especially through fall camp? That's all positives. No challenges for me. That's all positives. I mean, I mean, um, Four or, five, four or five guys is not going to be enough for me, you know, going into the season. So I'm going to need about, you know, nine or ten guys that's going to be available um, to be able to keep guys fresh. And I, I feel like um, I feel like by the end of camp I should have, you know, knock on wood, but, you know, um, hopefully guys can stay healthy. But, you know, if I can keep guys healthy, you know, I think going into the season I should have um, – different groups, I would get different guys I could put in the game, the spare guys, legs and stuff like that, and not have an issue. With Buford, how is he kind of different now where he was even in the spring uh, and that was the same kind of same thing? Well, he was in the room with older guys coming in. So right off the top, he was adopted by Cam Taylor Britt. So that's, you know, that was his, his guy he was with every day. So um, it's been around those older guys and Buford's uh, his, his effort is unmatchable. So, you know, that's just what he brings to the table, just to what he decide, decided that he wanted to do. Um, and that's what he could control is his effort. So, I mean, with a guy that's giving you effort like that, you got to find a place to put him. And so, um, you know, putting him anywhere in that secondary is what, he, what position he's going to play. And uh, he's doing a great job. Yeah, these guys are trying to watch the film um, two or three times a day. Um, so basically what, it, what they're doing is this practice that we just had, they'll go grab lunch and come back in and watch that film before I even get there. And so then I watch the film with the staff and then make the corrections and have my certain plays that I want to talk to the guys with. So they'll watch, they watch it again, you know, and then at night they'll watch it a third time. So. I mean, these, that, that player ran meeting is not something I said, hey, you guys need to do that. They decided they want to do that. So it's a good what sign. Who? Omar. What, what about his skill set for Omar Brown makes you think he's a guy that can play safety in the Big Ten coming from corner at the FCS? Um, I mean, being safety is, is not too far from being, uh, being a corner. It's, it's all, uh, you know, he has the size. So that's one factor, especially if you're in, in a play safety in this league. Um, but the mentality that he has, um, like I said, it, you know, um, I've had smaller safeties before, but they had big, big boy mentalities, you know. So Omar has that big boy mentality, um, and he has the size as well. So he was a big corner, you know, at the last school he went to, you know. Sure. Scott been talking about his effort, um, his unmatchable effort. You know, what he decided he wanted to do was come out and out effort everyone. everyone. And so um, that's what I like about him the most because that's what he, he controlled that. Uh, that's the mentality. Um, and so, you know, you make a lot of plays and you help this team out so much by just having effort. You know, someone else knock a ball out, fumble, 
we got a guy flying to the football. There you go, we get a turnover just because of this guy choosing to have unselfish effort. All right, so that's what I like about him the most. Very coachable, um, good football player as well. Javen Wright? Yeah. Doing a great job. All right, day one, got him an interception. Yep, so Javen Wright has done a great job. Back in the mix. Um, doing a great job. When, when you have a layoff that, I mean, he had a longer layoff. Um, how much rust, how much time does it take in your experience to kind of knock off the rust when you were a player or what you've seen as a coach? Well, the physical part of the game, I get it. But what Javen does the best is he probably, if it's top five guys on the team that watches more film, so he's in the he's in the office all day long. He's in the he's either in my office. He's up and down that hallway all day long. So with the time that he spent away from the game with his injuries, he still was around the game in the film room. So it's only a matter of time to get back in shape and get back moving around. That's what he's doing now, but mentally he's he never lost it. I don't know. I gave him a hard time when he got it. I, just, I gave him a hard time when he got the pick, you know. But I was, you know, I was just like, hey, man, you happy? You full or you still hungry? You know, just that quick. He's probably expecting me to say, good job. But I was like, you full or you full or you're hungry, bro? You know? So he said, I'm hungry. I said, good. That's something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you mix in between the safety and the yeah. Quentin talked about being left off the gym or that watch list. I know, uh, I'm sure you're using that as motivation for him. Are, are you using that as motivation for him? Yeah, he should be. He should be. He should He should be upset, you know. He should He should be upset. I mean, you got to put himself on that list. Yeah, you just don't get, you know, don't get, you don't, you don't get to put, be put on that list because you play football. You got to go out and make the kind of plays and be the kind of player that could be listed on that list. And so Quentin knows that, hey, I'm going to be the coach that keeps putting humble. Makes sense. You just don't get put on that on, on that list. You have to go out and make and dominate college football at the corner position to get put on that list. So in order for Quentin to think about that list, he has to dominate college football at that position. Not to put like too much on his shoulders, but you feel like you got to dominate college football to be put on that list. What does that look like? Dominate I mean, you have to be one of the top corners in the country. All right. Just can't, you know, you got to be one of the top corners in the country. You have to be um, a Cam Taylor Britt and better. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, last year Quentin Newsom wasn't a Cam Taylor Britt and better. He's getting there. I'm glad he's thinking about it. But now you know, you know what he got to do. You know, so I'm just more comfortable with talking about what you got to do to be this guy instead of just talking about being this guy. You know, if people don't wake up out of the bed and become that guy. You know, it's things you got to do to become that guy. You think he's doing those things in the offseason to become that guy? I think he's doing a great job. Yep, I think he's doing a great job. Yep. One thing it sounds like a lot of your players kind of have bought into this passing and on. It seems like when Quentin Newsom talks about the kind of leader he wants to be, he looked at DiCaprio Boodle as the kind of leader he now wants to pass on. What have you seen from your group as they kind of keep learning from those before them and trying to then pass that on to the next? Yeah, that's that culture I was talking about when I first got here, you know. When I first brought the first player from uh, transferred in here when I first got here, and I brought him in here to help me establish the culture here at this university. And, and those guys were babies then, and now they're growing up, and they're, guys are leaving, and guys are – so it's just passing along. So the, those guys um, – Quentin used to get in trouble – if I asked him where a freshman, my new freshman is at, and he told me he didn't know. So if I catch him walking across campus and I ask him where is Malcolm Hartzog, he say, I don't know, coach. He instantly gets in trouble. Make sense? And so I put the ownership on the older guys to make sure they're taking care of the younger guys. So when the younger guys get older, I do the same thing to them. So it's just, make sense? So right now, Quentin Newsom sits right next to uh, Malcolm Hartzog, but Newsom sits in the very front of the room. 
So day one of camp, he turned around and seen a freshman in the very back. He got his book bag, got his books, and went and sat in the back of the room by that freshman. That's what I'm talking about. How long did it take for him to get out of that room? Out of maybe what it meant is couple of and do those things. And how much did you have to challenge? The older guys kind of run that room. So it's kind of like the older guys that do it. They'll just, if, if, they, if they see something, they're going to say it. They're going to they're gonna bring it up. So it's kind of hard to hide in that room. You know what I'm saying? It's either I'm going to do it or they're going to do it. But they're so used to it. So. Yeah, I got vocal guys. Miles Farmer is vocal. Uh, Marquis Buford is vocal. Quentin Newsom is vocal. Um, Tommy Hill um, doesn't know as much as those guys do, but he's probably the most vocal, passionate guy out there on the field. You know, so. Um, a lot of those guys right now. With, 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 I mean, it's a situation where with his talent and uh, factory and his leadership in the face, they've been building. Is it a situation of Lance putting those as one goes as far as having a successful secondary this year? Yeah, you say Quentin knows what? It, as Quentin goes, as Rim goes. Oh no, Quentin no go. Quentin get passed up. That's how it goes, you know? The room is not up under Quentin. It's competition on the Quentin right now. So if Quentin don't go, the next man go. That's how it works. All right, so, you know, nobody's safe here. Just, we're here to try to, you know, we're trying to win. So, you know, no pats on the back. We're trying to win. We're practicing every day to win the football game.